not, whether they, you know, love you or not. So loving people is not depending on what other people do. So I don't love you because you have to love me. I love you because number one, you're a human being. And, and number two, because I'm born again, I have, God lo have God's love living inside me. So Paul, this is why I love people. This is how the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But you can't love your neighbor as you, as you, as you love yourself if you don't have true love living inside. You can't do it. You can't do it. And this is why many people, this is why many people gossip, they're jealous. This is why many people, you want, you want revenge on other people. Because you don't have love in the inside. You don't have any true love. But when you, ha when you have love, folks, when you have true love, you can love your enemies. You, you can love, you can love um, your enemies when you have God's love. Because, because you, God commands you, you must love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that includes your enemy. So, you can't just love people who like you. That's not how that works. You must love people who don't like you. I'm not trying to say you gotta agree with them. It's not about agreeing with everyone, but it's about it's about being kind, being gentle, telling the truth. That's how you love people, folks. It's not about agreeing with people with everything, but it's about being truthful, being humble, being meek, being slow to anger, not cussing out people because they have a different opinion than you. That's not lovely, folks. That's not lovely because I have, I have I have different I have disagreements with other people in different religions. But I don't say, hey, F you, F you, or whatever. That's not love. That's not love. That's very hateful. And this generation is very, very hateful. But God would teach you how to love. God would teach you how to love. Because Jesus Christ is the king of love. Jesus Christ is the source of all love. But God does not love sin. God does not love the sin in this world. God hates sin. You know how bad, you know how bad, how much, how bad God hates sin? Why Jesus Christ was so bloody and so messed up? Because Jesus Christ took the sin of the world. That's how much God hates sin. That God sent his son to take the punishment of sin of the whole world. So God hates sin. Because God is perfect. God is beautiful. God is beautiful. There's nothing beautiful and perfect about sin. Sin ruins us. Sin kills. Sin destroys. Sin separates us from God. When Adam and Eve sinned, God said, all right, get out the garden. Because when you sin against God, you get further away from God. This is why you got to be covered in the blood of Jesus. This is why you got to be born again of the water and spirit. This is why you must walk in holiness. This is why you must be led by the spirit of God. This is why you must stay in the word of God. Because the more we sin, the further away we get, we, further away we get from God. The further away we get from God. In this generation... You say, I don't believe in God because you love your sin. You love your sin. You love, you love your wickedness. So repent and get right with the Lord. Repent and get right with Jesus before it's too late. Because we're in the last days. We're in the, final, we're in the final days, folks. If you don't know this, we're in the final days. Because there is judgment coming upon the world, the whole world. Just how COVID-19 COVID put the whole world on lockdown. It's going to be that type of stuff happening in the last days. The Bible says in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. It says there will be diseases, there be earthquakes, pestilences, the pestilence. The Bible says in the last days, all this stuff happening right now, the Bible already says it will be like this. Because God, guess what? God knows the future. God knows the past, present, and future. And God warns his people, hey, this is going to happen. Prepare yourself. Hey, prepare yourself. I'm coming back. But before I come back, this stuff is going to happen. So you got, you got to read the signs of the times. You got to read the signs of the times. But most folks, you don't know what, you don't know the season we're in. You don't know the signs of the times. You think it's just Christmas season. Well, you got to get right with God, folks. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. Satan's time is almost up. Satan's time is almost up. And Jesus Christ is to come back and rule with a rod of iron. And you want to be on God's team. You want to be on Team Jesus. Because if you're on Team Satan, when Jesus Christ comes back, there's going to be everlasting destruction. There's going to be everlasting fire. So it's time for you to join Team Jesus, the winning team. Jesus Christ got the victory on the cross. So why why join the losing team, folks? Why live for Satan? Why live for Satan? It's like joining a basketball team that's 0 and 54. Like why, why join that team? Why join that team? Why not join the winning team? Jesus Christ says, hey, join my team, bro. I got it done for us. I'm the man. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do it. Let's go to heaven.
But you folks, you, you love wickedness. You love darkness too much. You love all this stuff that promotes sin. You love all this stuff that promotes death. This is, this is a very, very deaf culture. This is a deaf culture that wants to cover themselves in makeup. People want to cover their, cover their problems in makeup. You cannot cover your sin in makeup. You cannot cover you cannot cover this vomit in makeup. Give your problems to Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ heal you. Let God heal you. Jesus Christ, He is the beginning and the end, and He wants you. He wants you to have peace in your life. He wants you to have peace in your life. He wants you to have joy in your life. Because when you have joy in your life, when you have true joy that comes from God in this life, you're not going to want to indulge in the things in this world. Because this world does not give you anything. This world does not give you anything but instant gratification. I mean, I mean, come on, folks. You, you don't need instant gratification. You need something that lasts. You need something that's fulfilling. And there's nothing fulfilling about getting drunk every weekend. There's nothing fulfilling about sleeping around. That's not fulfilling. It feels good for a little bit, but it, it, you don't need that. You need God. You need Jesus. You need something. You need a firm foundation. You need a solid rock. Jesus Christ, he's a solid rock. He's unmovable. That's what you need. You need true love, not fake love, not lust, but you need true love. And true love is with Jesus. It's not in bars. It's not in strip clubs. It's not on Tinder, but it's with the Lord. It's with Jesus. He is true love. And when you have true love living inside you, you'll know how to love people properly. Because most this generation, you don't know how to, you don't know how to love people. It's all about sex and drugs and money. People think you know how to love, but you don't. That's why when something bad happens, you want to get divorced automatically. Because you don't know what love is. You don't know what commitment and faithfulness is. Because love takes sacrifice. Love takes sacrifice. But what happens when a generation, you don't want to sacrifice for no one. When someone talks, when life gets hard, you just want to break up. That means it was never love in the first place. It's just lust. You just want to use people just for sex or just because you're lonely at night. You want someone to hold you at night. You just want to cuddle. You just want to cuddle, buddy. All that stuff, folks, that's not have anything to do with love. You need true love. True love that stays with you. True love that's faithful. And Jesus Christ is faithful. The Bible says in Jeremiah, God has loved us with an everlasting love. He said it was from the Israel. God has an everlasting love for you. But folks, you're so disconnected from love. You're so disconnected from truth that you don't even want true love anymore. You don't want true love. You want a false love. You want you want you just want lust. You want temporary pleasures. It's not gonna be worth it. It's not worth it, folks, to live in lust. You look at every girl you want to have sex with. You you, you want to masturbate every day. You don't have to live like this, folks. You don't have to live like this. You can be free in Christ. You can have peace inside your soul. Jesus Christ says, come to me all your heavy laden, heavy burden. I'll give you rest for your souls. Jesus Christ says, I'll give you rest for your soul. Because most folks, you're out here because your, your soul has no rest. Your soul has no rest. Because life is stressful for everyone. I, I get that. Life, life can get hard for people. I live down here on planet Earth with you guys too. But I have, I have peace in my life. Because I have Christ in my life. So it doesn't matter what troubles happen in your life. When you have Christ in the inside of you, you can have peace. So after a long day at work, you don't have to say, hey man, it was a tough day at work. I got to crack the beer open. You don't have to do that. If you're a true saint of God, after a long day at work, you can just praise God. You can just go to, you can just go to sleep. You can just read the Bible, get some orange juice or something. But if you have no rest in your soul, we you have no rest in your soul when hard times come, you're like, hey, bro, you know, where's the next party at? Hey, bro, where's the drugs at? Where's the weed at? Because you have no rest. You have no rest in your body. You have no rest in your mind. That's why some of you got, you got sleep paralysis. And sleep paralysis, is a, it comes from fear. Sleep paralysis comes from fear. That means you have fear in your life. I don't know what you're scared of, but if you have sleep paralysis, you know, you feel like you're awake, but you can't move, that's a demon. That's, 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 that's demonic. That means you have fear in your life. But Jesus Christ can set you free from sleep paralysis. He can set you free from it. Hallelujah. He can set you free. So you, you, actually, you can actually go to sleep at night and not have sleep paralysis. Because everything in his life, this 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 world, this news shall put fear inside you. Because if you can put fear inside people, you can control people. 
in this, in this generation, you have been you have been um, brainwashed for a lot of fear, a, a, a lot, a lot of fear about COVID, about wars, and these people are freaking out about COVID-19. People, people wearing masks and stuff still because you have fear. You don't have trust in God. You don't have faith in God. You're full of fear and terror. And if you're full of fear and terror, it's very easy to manipulate you. It's very, very easy to manipulate people who are full of fear. Because all you gotta do is say, hey, you, you, want, you, want, you want your life saved, just come here. Take this vaccine. Hey, hey, you're scared, you're scared? Believe in us, we'll, we'll, we'll protect you, we'll protect you. Because you don't have no faith in God, you have no faith in the Lord. You have faith in science. You have faith in the government. The government doesn't care about you, folks. The government does not care about you. It's very evident they don't care about you. But you still put your trust in them. Why? Because you have no faith in God. You're an easy target to be manipulated. Easy target. This is why you got to put on the full armor of God. This is why you got to awake to righteousness. This is why the Bible says do not conform to this world, but be transformed. By renewing your mind. You must transform your mind. You must transform your mind. That means you must be able to think, folks. You got to think. You have to think. You just, you can't let society think for you. You can't let society say, well, this is how life is right now because we say so. You can't think like that, folks. You're going to be deceived. You're going to be deceived. You have to be able to think for yourself. You have to think for yourself. You have to. If you cannot think for yourself, you will be led astray to hell. And, it, and, if you, and God gives you wisdom. God gives you wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He will. Read the, read the word of God. But folks, if you're listening to every, you believe everything on the news, you believe everything on TV, you're going to be led astray. And that's why many folks right now are led astray. Stop being led astray. Amen. Believe in God. Amen. Repent. Amen. Repent. Repent. You gotta repent, man. Hey, you want a card, bro? Go. I got a card for you. You got a card? You got a card? Yeah. Hey, man. Actually, I want to talk to you, man. How you guys? How y'all feeling? Yeah, how you guys doing, bro? It's a good place here. Yes, sir. On your way. Bro, how old are y'all, man? Fifteen. Bro, you're the oldest. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm from here too. We live here too. I'm Troy. Yeah. That's Chris, man. How you doing? Not good. Not bad, but I mean, good, good. Yeah. Y'all believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. Are your parents like Christian or anything? Yeah. Oh, bro. The end days are coming, so you gotta repent. Yes. Bro, even the last days, man. We gotta be, we gotta get right with God, man. We gotta be born again, bro. We gotta let God set our hearts, our temple. Let God purify us, bro. Let God purify us. Let, um, let God change our ways, man. Let, let God, let God change our ways. So yeah, we gotta watch all of us, man. I got like a little bugs for you guys. Can you see my bag? Wait, we got it. Oh, yeah, I think all the bridges are like that. I feel it too. There's one people run. Thank you. 
You can't give up loved ones to follow Christ. You're just not worthy to follow Jesus, the Bible says. You're not worthy to do it. Because Jesus Christ deserves all the glory. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is amazing. He deserves it. But many folks, you choose, you choose temporary things over Christ. You, you, you choose the wrong people over Christ. And in the end, it's going to be your downfall. Because the Bible says it's appointed man one time to die. Then it's judgment. That means you get one life and you're judged by God. And when God judges your life, when God judges you to see, did you live for him? Or did you live for your girlfriend? Or did you live for your uh, for your boyfriend? Or did you live for your dog? Or did you live for social media? Because all these people out here on social media doing all this cloud chasing, doing all these videos, doing all these memes and stuff just to get attention. They're, they're, they're living for man. They're not living for God. And in the end, it's going to cost their soul. Because the Bible says, what is the profit of man to gain the world and lose your soul? So what is the profit you have 100 million followers on Instagram but God does not know you. That's very, very sad. What is your problem? You have all the money in the world. You know, you're a billionaire. You got, you got a super yacht. You got all these, you got houses in every country, every nation. You got all these girls on the side. What is your problem? You have all this stuff and die and go to hell. That's very, very sad. And that's a lot of people right now. A lot of people, you're, you're giving up. You're, you're, you're giving up God for this world. You're giving up God for this, for this world. You want all the money, you want all the girls, you want all the sex, all the clothes, all the Gucci bag, you want all this stuff, but you don't want nothing to do with God. And when you die, you're, you're gonna be separated from God for eternity. Cause you're not taking your Gucci bag to hell, folks. You're not taking, your, you're not taking none of your stuff you love so much with you when you die. You're not, you're not taking it with you. It's gonna be left, oh, it's gonna be left down here on earth for your kids, or it's gonna be sold online. Oh no. So when you die, all you're going to take is going to be your soul. And God's going to judge you by your lifestyle. So when God judges your lifestyle, and all you see is all you did was just love money and love materials. You didn't care about him. You don't want to live for him. You've been to church like every blue moon. It's going to be a bad, bad ending, folks. It's going to be a very bad, sad ending. Because God requires you to live for him. God says you must live for him. Keep his commandments because this world is vain, folks. This world is not as fun as you think. When you actually dig deep into this world, this world is actually very, very demonic. This world is not fun, folks. There's nothing fun about um, getting drunk. There's nothing, there's nothing fun about sleeping around. It's not fun. It's not. It's just emptiness. It's just, it's just people being entertained by emptiness. People say, hey, I'm empty. You're empty too. Let's hook up. That's just emptiness, folks. There's no purpose in that. There's no purpose in a life like that. You, you're just going pleasure to pleasure, bedroom to bedroom, drug to drug. That, that, that's, that's meaningless. There's no purpose in a life like that. But God gives you purpose, folks. God gives purpose to everything. When you have sex with someone you love, like your spouse, your husband, your wife, that's purposeful. But if you're just having sex with random girls on Tinder, that, that's meaningless sex. That's just meaningless. And now you get all these soul ties, now you're breaking people's hearts and stuff. Because you're choosing vanity over God. You're choosing vanity over love. This world, folks, this world does not know how to love. You cannot love without the knowledge of God. You cannot love probably without knowing who God is. If you don't know who God is, you will never know how to love truly. But with God, folks, with Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, you will know how to love. He is true love. But it's not walking in lust. It's not walking in the lust of the flesh. Because many folks, you just walk in the lust of the flesh. And this is why people love getting drunk. They love masturbation. They love all this stuff. Because you're, you're in your flesh. You keep feeding your flesh. You must stop feeding your flesh. You must crucify your flesh. You have to crucify your flesh. You must, you must put your flesh in subjection. You must, you must feed your spirit, man. You must feed your spirit, man. How do you feed your spirit, man? Prayer, worshiping God, reading the word of God. Because if you don't do those things, folks, your spirit, man, will get weaker, and your flesh will get stronger. And this is why people just want to become addicts. You're a porn addict, you're a sex addict, you're an alcoholic, because you keep feeding your flesh. You keep feeding your flesh, and your spirit, man, is starving. Your spirit, man, wants more of God, 
but you're not giving it. You're not giving that to, to him or her. Are you, you're, you're giving your flesh is just drugs and sex and porn. All this stuff is making your flesh stronger. And this is why people become addicts. They say, hey, bro, I just can't stop because your flesh is strong. Jesus says, every man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. You must live off the word of God. You must live off the word of God. You, you can't live off alcohol. You cannot live off drugs. You cannot live off psychedelics. You're, you can't live like that. Your soul does not want that. Your soul does not want that. Your soul wants God. Your spirit wants God. But you live in a fallen nature and your flesh your flesh is trying to pull you away from God. But this is why you must crucify your flesh. But most of all, you listen to your flesh. When your flesh says, hey, man, let's just get drunk tonight. Let's come, let's come out tonight. Let's get drunk. You're like, okay, flesh, let's do it. But when God pokes your heart and says, hey, hey, spend time with me. Spend time with me. Hey, don't do it. You don't listen to that voice. You don't listen to, the, you don't listen to God trying to poke you. You must listen to God. And you must be in the word of God. You need to get in the word of God. To make your spirit stronger. Because if you're not reading the Bible, folks, it's not just you just read, you just read the Bible one time and that's it. That's not how that works. You have to occupy. You have to continue to read the Word. You have to continue to pray. Continue to, to preach. Continue to love God. Continue to worship. And it's not a one-time thing and it's just done. That's not how that works. Because we're in a spiritual war. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So these demons are ruthless. So, so if you think you're just gonna go to church, just one blue moon and uh, be okay, you're gonna be knocked out to fight. You're gonna be eliminated. You're gonna be eliminated. Because this is a fight, folks. This is a war going on. And you're in it, whether you know or not, whether you believe or not, you are in this war. And if you're not gonna fight back in this war, you know, these, these demons are gonna wreck your life. They're gonna wreck your marriage. They're gonna wreck your kids. Your finances, these demons are going to wreck your life if you don't fight back. And you wonder why all this stuff is just happening. You say, hey, man, my marriage is just falling apart. Hey, my little Johnny just won't come home at night. He's disrespectful. Well, are you, are you, are you, do you believe in God? Are you, are you in a war? Are you fighting back? What are you doing in your life? Because if you're not fighting back, folks, you're, you're going to get knocked out. The devil's going to knock you out if you don't fight back with the word of God. If you don't put your trust in God. The, de the devil is going to keep stomping on you until you do something. And many folks, you feel like giving up. You say, life is just too hard. I can't do it no more. Life is too hard. This is why you have God. You're not supposed to do this life by yourself. You're not supposed to do this life by yourself. God wants to walk with you. God knows his life is hard. But this is why God has angels. This is why God, is. that's why he came down. Jesus Christ knows your pain. Jesus Christ was tempted just like us. Jesus Christ dealt with the same stuff that we did. Jesus, God came down in the flesh, and God experienced what we what we experienced. So God knows what it means to be um, betrayed, Judas. God knows how it means for people to hate you. The, the Pharisees hated Jesus. So God knows how it feels, folks. God knows how it feels. So this is why you can give your problems to God. You can trust God because God has overcame this world. God has overcome this world. You can overcome this world too, but you're not going to do it by yourself. You're not going to just do it without God. You're not going to do it, folks. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You, you have to have God in your life for you to make it, for you to, to for you to reign with Christ in the millennial kingdom. You have to live for Christ because if you if you live this life without Jesus Christ, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a very very disappointing life at the end. But life is beautiful. Life is beautiful, and life can be and life is meaningful. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come so they can have life and have it more abundantly. So all this killing, all this murder, all this drugs, all this sexual morality and this lifestyle, all this stuff comes from the devil. But Jesus says, I come so they can have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus Christ is for life. God is for life. This is why God said, hey, be fruitful and go multiply. He didn't say, hey, um, get a baby and go kill your baby. God is about multiplying. God is about multiplying. But the devil is about subtracting life. The devil uh, the devil wants to take life and God wants to give life. But in generation, you're so wicked, you like to take life. You love abortion. 
You love rap music. You love all this stuff that's about taking life because you've been deceived, folks. You've been deceived by saying God is for life. God is a creator. He creates. God makes things in existence. That's what God does. God is not for taking life. God is not like taking life. God is not like when people die. We do die. God has to judge us, but that's not God. God is not desiring for any of us to perish, but all to come to repentance. So why this generation, why do you love death so much? Why, why do you love all this death, folks? Why do you love death? You don't understand? Well, if, if, are we going to start cheering when people die now? If someone gets shot in a street, street corner, you'll say, oh, yeah, death. Because, folks, you love death. You, you love death. You love Halloween. You love all this rap music that talks about killing. You love death. So why don't you cheer when people get killed in the street? I'm just saying, you love death so much. Do you, do you like life or do you not like life? Wh which one is it, folks? You just can't pick and choose. You're very inconsistent as a generation. You follow you you love you hate when you hate when people die, but you love abortion at the same time. Which one is it, folks? Do you want life or do you not want life? Which one is it? Stop stop being inconsistent. You're inconsistent because you're confused. And you're confused because you don't know God. That happens when you don't know God. You're very confused. There's a very confused generation. That's why people don't know if they're a boy or a girl. People say, I'm non-binary. You're confused because you don't know God. A very confused generation. So either either you're for life or you're not for life. But you just you just you, but you but you just but you just can't you just can't hop back and forth when it's when it's when it's convenient for you. You just can't hop back and forth when it's convenient for you. Either you're for life or you're not for life. Because Jesus Christ, he's for life. And if you're for Jesus, you be for life also. And that's how that works. But you cannot play this hip-hop game when going back and forth. You have, to, you have to make up your mind. You have to make a choice. Either you're going to follow God or follow Satan. Either you're going to follow what's right or you're going to follow what's wrong. Because being lukewarm leads to ditch. God is not like lukewarm Christians. God is not like people who want to play in the middle. God says, I, really, I wish you were either hot or cold. But since you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So there's a lot of people who say, hey, I believe in God, bro. But I just think, man, life is just different now. And yeah, no. No, that's not how that works. You cannot be in the middle with God. Either you live for God or you don't live for God. Either you sold out for God or you're not sold out for God. But there's no in the middle. There's no I love God, but I'm just very busy with my life, man. And I don't, there's no that, that's not going to cut it, folks. That's not going to cut it. You, you, you have to submit to God. You have to live for God. There, there, there's no, hey, I love Jesus, but, you know, I'm just very busy with my schedule. That's not going to work. You're not going to make it, folks. You're, you're going to be cut off. You're going to be cut off. You, you have to be sold out for the Lord. You have to be sold out for the Lord. Some of you folks, you're, you're sold out to your favorite sports team. You're sold out to your favorite sports team. You have your favorite football people in your in your room, got all these pictures and stuff, all these plaques. You're sold out to your favorite football team, but you're not sold out to God. Idolatry, folks. Some of you folks, you treat sports like religion. Some of you folks, you treat sports just like religion. You know every stat about Tom Brady, but you know no scripture in the Bible. What's up with that? You know Tom Brady's whole history. You know Tom Brady's stats in high school. You know Tom Brady's wife. You know Tom Brady's kid's name. You know, all these stats about all these athletes, you don't know who you are, but you know nothing about God. That is sad, folks. Do you not understand you're going to stand before God one day? You know you, you know the chances of you uh, meeting Tom Brady? Probably probably very slim. You know the chances of you meeting God? 100%. 100. Because everyone's going to stand before God. Everyone's going to stand before God one day. So it's probably more smart to know who God is and live for God then for you to indulge in, you know, um, football stats and all this idolatry of celebrities because you'll probably never meet your favorite artist. You'll probably never meet them. But you will meet God one day, guaranteed. You will meet God one day, guaranteed. No doubt about that. So it's probably more logical to get to know God than try to worship uh, a sold-out celebrity who worship Satan because they want fame and money for 15 minutes. Because these celebrities, they just sold out for fame and money. They just they just want attention. They want they want they want the um, validation. But they it, what is it profit a minute to lose your soul? Your soul is priceless, folks. Your soul is priceless. 
Your soul is worth more than anything here on earth because it's eternal. What's up, bro? Hey, man. Come on, bro. Hey, I got your number, man. Hey, text me tonight, bro, please. Text me, man. All right. So um, your soul is priceless. Your, your soul is priceless. The devil will give you a nice car. He'll give you a hot girl. He'll give you a, a nice guy with money. But if you don't have Jesus Christ, he's just laughing at you. The devil is just laughing at you. Because riches are not going to save you from the wrath of God. When God judges you, when you die, he's not going to judge you based off your popularity. He's not going to say, well, you know, you're a very good TikTok dancer. Just come to heaven. That's, that's, not, that's not how God's going to judge you. He's going to judge you by righteousness. He said, did you forgive people? Did you love him? Did you do his will? Are you covering the blood? God's going to judge you by his standards. He's not going to judge you by mere human standards. You know, get a college degree, get a house, get a dog, and you're, like, you're successful. That's not how God looks at success. Success is being holy, being righteous, being godly, being born again. That's true success. That's true success. But God's not going to judge you based on how this world judges you. Because this world judges you like, oh, well, you're rich. Oh, that means you must be important. Oh, you're famous. Oh, that means you must be important. That's not how God judges people. That's not how God judges people. Because we're all important in the eyes of God. We all matter in the eyes of God. So don't get caught up in this societal thinking and how to judge people. Don't get caught up in all the fame and money and all the all promotions. Don't get caught up in that stuff because all that stuff is vain. All that stuff does not matter in the end because God loves you all the same. God loves, God loves the rich and poor, small and great, all the same. And God's going to judge us the same way. It doesn't matter if you're famous. It doesn't matter if you live in a, in a, in a, in a two-buck nowhere. It doesn't matter if you're in a third-world country. It doesn't matter if you're in America. God is, going, God is going to judge us all the same. So it's better to live for God. It's better to live for God than to live for this wicked world. Because, folks, the more, the more wickedness you do in this world, the more wickedness you do, the harsher judgment. So these celebrities will have a harsh judgment. You, you do not you do not want to be one of these celebrities, folks. You do not want their life. Because these celebrities are leading people to hell. These celebrities have blood in their hands. Because, folks, God's going to hold you accountable for the people you led astray. So if you're out here half naked, having guys stumble, having guys gawk over your butt and stuff like that, you're leading men astray. You're calling people to sin. You have blood on your hands, folks. If you're calling people to do drugs, you're a weed dealer. You're a drug dealer. You're, you got his blood on your hands, and God's gonna hold you accountable for all these sins, all this, all this wickedness you're doing in this world. God's gonna hold you accountable. So this is this is why you don't need to live in sin. Because if you let your, if you show your kids how to sin, God's gonna hold you accountable. If you if you teach your cousins, if you teach your school system, if you're a teacher and you tell you and you tell these kids it's okay to have a sex change, God's gonna hold you accountable. That's blood on your hands, and you die for. There's no rest in peace. People think when everyone dies, just rest in peace. You don't understand people are wicked. You don't understand God is judging wickedness every day. I think I read, I think it's like 180,000 people die every day. And folks, let me tell you this right now. Most of those people are not going to heaven. I'll tell you that. Most of those folks are not going to heaven. You got, you got to be born again to go to heaven. You, always, you got to live for Christ to go to heaven. You just can't ignore God and die and just go to heaven. That's not how that works. God wants true people. God wants people who love him in there. God wants true followers. In America, you have no excuse why you're not following God. You have all the time in the world. You have all the resources to, to find God. You're just being lazy, folks. You're just being lazy and ignorant at this point. And there's no excuse for this. There's no excuse for this. Or why you don't know God. You can do all the facts. You can, do, you can find God through science. You can find God in so many different ways. There is no excuse why you don't know who God is. There is no excuse why you're saying, I don't know if I believe in God or not. There is no excuse for that. Absolutely no excuse. It's time for you to seek God. It's time for you to get on your face in prayer and be like, God, reveal yourself. I repent of my sins. It's about that time. Because there's no reason why you have all these resources in America, all these resources, and people are still confused. People are still confused about what's the meaning of life, why I'm here. Am I a boy? Am I a girl? There's no excuse for this. You got to wake up and find Jesus. You got to wake up and find Jesus Christ immediately. Because if not, folks, you're, you're gonna, the judgment is going to fall on your head. The wrath of God is going to fall on your head. Because you did not pick holiness. You did not pick the truth. You did not pick the truth. 
You need to love the truth, folks. Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the truth. You don't make your own truth, folks. You don't make your own truth. People say, hey, yes, your truth, and that's my truth, and we'll all just get along and hold hands and sing Kumbala. That's not how that works. That, that's not how that works. You don't just make your own truth. You just don't make your own truth and say, hey, well, I believe in God. I think God is, looks like this. You believe that. It's okay. Let's all just hold hands and hug and go our own way. That's not how life is, folks. That's not reality. Reality is there's only one God. There's only one God. There's only one God. And his name is Jesus, and he loves you, and he died for you. And he wants you to have a relationship with him. So don't believe in the society way of thinking. Don't believe in the society's uh, philosophy. The philosophy is don't say anything to hurt anyone's feelings because uh, I'm going to be a loving person because I'm a nice person. Don't, don't, don't fall into that philosophy. Don't fall into that trap and believe it. You know, just, just agree with people. Just say, hey, bro, do what you want, man, and I'll do what I want, and that's a good life. No, don't, don't, don't believe in that stuff, folks. You'll be deceived. You know, you're going to find yourself in a very, very terrible place when you die if you do not love the truth, if you do not find the truth. Because Satan, Satan is the father of lies. Satan causes all this confusion. Satan causes all this confusion. And if you're not in the word of God, you're going to be confused. If, if you're not reading the Bible, you're going to be confused in life. But life is not confusing. It doesn't have to be. God made, God has made it very simple. God has made, God has made it very simple. Believe in him. Do his will. Do his will. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what your background is. You can be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can be saved by the grace of God. It's very simple. But the devil, the devil puts all these obstacles in your path. The devil puts all these stumbling blocks in front of you. And folks, it's up to you to avoid these traps. It's up to, it's up to you to overcome these obstacles. But many folks, you're so lazy, you don't want to overcome the obstacles. You don't want to. You don't want to read the word. You don't. You don't want to seek God. You don't want to put the time in. It's just laziness, folks. And the devil has made you lazy with all the drugs, all the pornography, all the sex. He got you distracted. You're on Hulu so long. You're on TV so long. Your brain's being fried. All this stuff is coming against you. But this is why. You got to refresh your mind with the gospel. This is why you got to renew your mind in the gospel. You got to renew your mind. This is why you got to take a step back from this world and get closer to the Lord and let, the, and let God open your eyes. Let God, let God show you what's really going on in this wicked world. Because when you actually see what's going on in this world, you'll be like, oh, wow. You, you, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's what's going on in this world. You'll be like, oh, wow, that's what's going on in, in the government. When you step back from this world and let God give you wisdom, you know what's really going on in this wicked world. You know what's going on. But if you're just indulging every little thing, every little drama, every little news article, you're going to lose your mind. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to be full of fear. You're going to be full of terror. You, you're going to be full of all types of bad stuff because you're not giving your problems to God. You're not asking God, hey, God, what do you think about this? Hey, God, what's going on here? You don't ask God. So... We gotta come out of our slumber. We gotta come out of our slumber and come to Jesus. We gotta come out of our slumber and, and wake up. We gotta wake up. It's time to wake up and get right with the Lord. Then he's coming back. He's coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready, folks? Are you ready? For the coming of the Lord.